What's up, everyone? My name is Joshua. I want to welcome you. I don't even know what this is, to be honest with you. Um, it's not really a broadcast, although I am going to talk a little bit before this audio plays. What is this audio? This is audio of a care conference at MSOP. MSOP is a shadow prison. It's supposed to be a state hospital that helps sex offenders rehabilitate and people that are mentally ill rehabilitate. However, that doesn't really happen there. Um, also, if you're on YouTube right now, I'd be very grateful if you liked and subscribed because, well, we do content like this. Like one of the things I'm not trying to win a popularity contest by any means. If you know my history, you probably understand why, but I'm not trying to do that. I'm here to provide value. I'm here to be a voice for the voiceless. I'm here to elevate other voices for the voiceless. And part of my personal mission, of course, is to equip the voiceless so that they have a voice. And one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about working with the prisoners that are locked up uh, in civil commitment or under a civil commitment law or rule or whatever you want to call it, I mean, it, it, it's a death sentence, but I'm passionate about it because a lot of these men already served their time. They've already served the, the time that they were sentenced to. And a lot of them, went out and lived their life, did nothing wrong, didn't commit any more crimes, raised families, were all good. And then all of a sudden, one day, these, these city leaders from around the country that are a part of this, you know, the, the civil commitment states, uh, they went and swept up some of these prisoners and threw them in the civil commitment facilities. When I say prisoners, they weren't prisoners anymore. They were, re they were out living their life. There are some people that are in these facilities that have never been charged with a crime at all. It is screwed up beyond measure. One of the things that got my attention and that really aggravated me the most about some of these, uh, these situations, because there's a lot of horror stories, okay? It's one thing to be locked up and not be charged. That's one thing that sucks. And every single one of you would not like that, especially when you hear some of the reasons they actually got put there in the first place like it just it none of it makes sense but one of the things that got me really passionate about this is because i have a history of working with with people that have complex disabilities als muscular dystrophy spinal cord injuries cerebral palsy and so on wound care was a big part of what we did also so i've worked with a lot of orthotics diabetic shoes specialty cushions and so on why am i telling you this well, I'm telling you this because one of the things that we had to do quite often to be able to supply medical equipment to people was fight them, was to take them to court. Medicare, Medicaid, Blue Cross Blue Shield, you name the insurance company, we took them on for various reasons. After I sold our, after my father and I sold our family business, uh, we got bought out by this large national company. And this large national company, uh, when they put me in a position to do contract negotiation, contract negotiating. Now, why does that matter? Well, because with contract negotiating, you get to learn a lot about how insurance companies think, like what their objective is, their agenda. But also with that, you learn a lot about the rules and the regulations and the thing, what patients' rights are, what the hospital's rights are, what the facility's rights are, what the doctor's rights are. You learn all of this stuff. You have to know. That's the only way that you can really do your job is by knowing everyone's roles and responsibilities. So I am not an attorney, but I do have enough history in this industry to know that people have rights that they're not even aware of. And guess what? They may put the rights on the wall for you, but if you don't go to that wall, you're never going to see them. And most people don't even know to ask. <sighs> anyway, so... I've been working, one of the things that really got me passionate about helping these quote unquote prisoners or patients is that a lot of them were victims of medical malpractice in a variety of ways. They were not getting proper care. They weren't getting treated. One of the things that I brought up in one of the past episodes that I've done, and of course you can go to joshuatberglin.com and under video, there's civil justice. That's a category of videos that I do. That is a lot of civil civil uh, commitment videos there. And in one of those videos, um, 
I, I talk about how medical malpractice is happening and how they have some people that are just dying in these facilities for no reason. Like they're not a threat to society. They can't even move. They can't even walk. They're like confined to a wheelchair because they're morbidly obese or they have amputations. They're like they're not a threat to anyone. But if anything, they should have proper care because I, I've used this example before. But if a patient is not sitting in a wheelchair, uh, sitting in a wheelchair properly, they are at risk of, decubit get, of getting skin breakdown, a decubitus ulcer, bed sore, whatever you want to call it. Now, those surgeries are extremely expensive. So there's all of these practical reasons for a hospital, a facility, an insurance company, or whoever the pain source is to actually care about giving proper care because it saves them money. But when you don't give someone proper care, these problems just compound on top of each other, making more and more problems, making it more expensive for everyone. Now, in this case, with the, the people that are a part of uh, they're locked up due to civil commitment. Well, guess who's paying? The taxpayer. So the medical malpractice that's happening in these facilities is actually costing you money. <laughs> it, it's costing you money. And so in this video today, and I'm going to show you, because that's this is going to be some of the screen, and I'll change some of the, Im the images. You see that? It says MSOP. This is a care conference call. MSOP. This happened today. What is today? Today is Monday, February 27th. At 3 p.m. today, this call happened. I did not start recording until about two minutes into the call. But that said, it's 43 minutes of very troubling, troubling dialogue. You're going to hear patients. You're going to hear a patient advocate. You're going to hear the nurse and the caregiver or the person that's responsible for overseeing the meeting. You're going to hear them talk about not giving the patient proper care. And, and, and this is not like it's just some dude that sprung an ankle. This is somebody that is diabetic. This is somebody that has massive heart issues, is in chronic pain, and is not getting treated. Not getting treated, the, there's, there's medical malpractice with how medication's been handled. There's medical malpractice in the sense that they, the guy's not getting proper care. And you have to understand something. These facilities are created to rehabilitate. It's a mental health facility meant to rehabilitate. The reason why the people are in MSOP and the other shadow prisons that are under civil commitment is because of mental health issues. However, the more I've spoken to the different men that are locked up around the country, I don't think mental health is the issue. I think somebody else is the issue. And <laughs> this is really screwed up. I'm not saying everybody there is innocent. I'm not saying any of that. I'm not saying every everyone there deserves compassion. I'm not saying it. But I know for a fact that there are several men there that should not be there for a lot of different reasons. But the fact is that they are there and they have no hope of getting out. No hope. They're fighting to get out, but they've been told that they're there for the rest of their life. Now, the problem with that, and there's a lot of problems with that, but the biggest problem with that is if they are there because of mental health issues, but yet their physical body is not being taken care of, they have no chance of successfully of successfully completing the program. They have no chance of actually rehabilitating themselves because when you're in freaking pain, you don't have time to care about your mental. You're in pain. You, you, when you're in pain, people lash out. They get angry. They get confused. It's screwed up. It, 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 it's like you, you can't work on your mental health when you're in physical pain. Unless if you're like a, a ninja or something like that. But I don't know how many ninjas there are anymore or yoga masters. Like, I don't think they're teaching them any of that. So anyway, in this video, you're going to hear some very troubling things. I speak up probably at the 30 minute mark. And I ask and I bring a quite I bring up the diabetic shoe issue because the, the nurse there was trying to act like he didn't qualify for diabetic shoes. I was not going to say a word, but having sold diabetic shoes for 18 years of my life, 
I know how people qualify. And literally, the patient, Mr. Wallace, is saying all of the reasons he qualifies to the whole thing. And then they play this game that, well, you know, you didn't really qualify. But then when I spoke up, their tune changed. You have to hear that. But it gets worse. So I listen to more and more and more. There's more abuse, more crying out for help. Like the dude is desperate for help. And these people don't give two craps. So finally, I had enough. I spoke up. My blood was boiling. I wish I could have composed myself better. I wish that I could remember all of the laws and the rules, but it's been a long time. But MSOP is in violation of the American for Disabilities Act. Because it protects people with mental health. Oh, and physical disabilities also. So the reason I'm making this video is because I'm praying with everything in me that someone out there gives a crap enough that has the power to do something about this to at least investigate what's happening. I mean, mind you, I may be tipped them off, but here's the thing. I've got other, I got other videos and I've got the emails from other people that work in the facilities that back up everything that is being said that I say that's happening there, like it's confirmed in other facilities. So these people are not pulling it out of their butt. They're not making, these prisoners are not making up the neglect that's happening. Because frankly, there is a big group of them that just go along with it. They're like little sheep. Okay, okay, I'm just going to go along with this. And then other people that are not sick, the other people that are well, they're there and, and and they're suffering for no reason. The fact is this, the people there are not being treated humanely. But they're, the, the, the staff at MSOP is in violation of so many laws, so many rules, so many regulations, and the facility needs to be shut down. And if you don't believe me, please listen. I beg you, please listen to what, what the conversation that's taking place. And again, at the end, I mean, it wasn't like I cursed anybody out that I know of. Um, I didn't curse anybody out. I just wasn't like on point with all of the laws and regulations. I was shaking. I was so upset. And you're going to understand why when you hear Mr. Wallace talk and when you hear how he's treated. And then you hear Daniel, who has become like a brother to me, Um never met, but we've talked like 30 or 40 times at this point. And like, you're going to hear him speak up. Like, and the why this matters for you is because this can happen to anyone. Anyone. Oh, never mind the religious freedoms being taken away. Your right to just basic health care. You have rights. Every one of us have rights. Some people don't really care to honor those rights. And MSOP in Minnesota is one of those facilities and it needs to be investigated. Help me get them investigated because what's happening there to those men can happen to any of you, any of you. And it's not to scare you, but I'm serious. You should hear some of these stories in the past episodes, but check this one out. Thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for however you're listening or watching to this. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers for these men and also their families. Thank you for being here. I said that like 10 times. Anyway, here's the audio. I've been addressed and they're telling me to take uh, ibuprofen and Tylenol and rub with Voltram rub and none of that stuff's working. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause for a moment. I'm okay. going to turn on ankle. So just so I can have, so November of 22 is when your complaint was? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then x-ray was January? The x-ray was, yeah, 60 days. No, wait, December 29th. And then you went out to see, or you signed a consent, I just to go to see podiatry, correct? Uh, I haven't seen him. So it was that. And then coming they, up. pardon me? That is coming up. Okay. Okay. Now I have my uh, 
my blood pressure issues. Okay, I'm gonna stop you because you have okay. shoulder after your ankle. So okay, we'll go to the sh we'll go to the shoulder. Okay, I just want to flow with what you have. I rode a kite on the shoulder, and that would have been, um, let's see. In in this in the in the end of uh, December, and nothing was done. Now I had an X-ray done in January. January yeah. Yep, and they found degeneration, but they still hasn't they still haven't treated anything. So there's you, so degenerative joint disease. The treatment is really depending on the degree is a shoulder replacement. So that would be something that orthopedics would look at. And I know you have an orthopedics appointment also coming up. Right. But now the pain's still there, and they're not doing nothing for the pain. They tell me to take ibuprofen, which you should have something back from the retinal surgeon that says I'm not supposed to be on ibuprofen because I have high blood pressure, and that just came recently. And so it's not working. You're not treating the pain. So then my high blood pressure last week was 189 over 109. And if you Google 189 over 109, it says stage three hypertension, see doctor immediately. What they do is they tell me to go back to my cell. They don't treat it. Because we know you have hypertension, so it's not an undiagnosed problem, but Tanya, your HRN reached out to cardiology yeah. And adjusted your medication. Yeah. And why would she have done that through the cardiologist? Because I'll read you her notes directly. Hang on. Okay. Review client's consultation record from 2-17-23 visit to Retina Consultants of Minnesota. That note is stress the importance of keeping blood pressure under good control. I then reviewed clients' reports, recent recorded blood pressures in Avatar and sent update to client's cardiologist, Abby Sensa, Dr. Kazmi Kazmi, Kazam, yeah. through the EPIC portal. My message to Dr. Kazmi Kazam was as follows, and he lists the blood pressures. Client is scheduled for cardiology follow-up with you uh, coming up. Do you recommend any medication changes prior to him being seen with you or await follow-up appointment? Dr. K responded as follows. Let's increase amlodipine to 10 milligrams daily. Let's get some numbers seven days after that increase. Following that up, we will increase the chloride to 25 milligrams twice daily if you need. Okay. Now let's go to my after my cardiologist appointment on 12-4. My blood pressure has been really low with the new medication. When working, when working out, it runs 123 over 63 and lower. So now they dropped my 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 medicine from 10 to 5 the same stuff they just increased so it was running great know what happened shoulder pain did she notify that the cardio to the cardiologist that the reason his blood pressure was up because he was in pain no she didn't because the cardiologist would have never increased my blood pressure medicine over pain so you're so prior to december when your shoulder started hurting your blood pressure was normal yes Yes, I have it. I have everything right here. Discuss this with your provider at your appointment. And so nothing gets done. And now that they increase my blood pressure medicine, but I'm still in pain. Has it worked? No, my levels are still high. Because pain's not going to be subsided by blood pressure medicine. They just took it yesterday. It was 159 over 91. But there's no, there's no no narcotics are going to help shoulder pain. I, I, no. Something must help. Altram, something. Something must help. I get lightning bolts down to my arm. Yep. I can't sleep at night. My blood pressure is through the roof. My celly is ready to hit the button because I'm in so much pain. I don't, care if it's, I don't care if it's opiate or whatever. Something must help. Nothing over the counter is helping. I can't take ibuprofen. So something must help, and they're telling me I have to self-buy everything on canteen. They don't have anything on canteen that works. And something helps. Does your TENS unit help? No. I would if it's a torn muscle. I've been advised to use it. They haven't gave me an ultrasound in it. And you know what happens if you use a TENS unit on a torn muscle? 
it makes it worse. Mark, and I, I hear that you're upset. Can you just well, right? Up, but I mean, it, this is the run. Look at this. I have a run around. I'm chasing my tail for months right. for something so simple, and I know they did not notify the cardiologist that my blood pressure. I mean, that I was in pain. Sure. They they neglected that, so they misrepresented my case to my cardiologist. That's not right. I, I hear you. And I am no, you don't hear me. I'm the one that has to live in pain. I'm the one that's getting heart valve damage. My retinal's getting damaged. They have to change medication. You're not. You don't have to deal with this. You go to people that take care of you. Not. I got eight months of CD cardiologist. Eight months. You don't live this. I do. And I know what real health care is. I was out on the streets in 2017. I went to the clinic. They would have never let me go like that. If I went to with my ankle, they would have addressed it that day. And that pushes off. It's been three months. And I'm waiting to see, waiting to have something done. That's not real world stuff. That's this. That's third world country stuff. And I, you wouldn't be upset? Tell me you wouldn't be upset. Not, I know you would be. I'm so not saying that. I'm just saying I have every right to a, 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 a be adamant about how I feel about this because it's my life. I understand that. So you've had a hypertension since 2020. I came, you know, I came here with, Kerry Orvac took me off everything that I came on. Okay, I'm just looking back at cardiology notes. I, I, right, I only... because she took me off my medication. She took everything that I was on and threw it to the wall and put me on 200 milligram metapropra, which the cardiologist said, what are you doing on that? I was on a whole different medication when I came here. She took everything. They took my rescue inhaler when I came here until they brought me down to Sandstone Ascension and said, oh, wow, he does need a rescue inhaler. He only has 63% of his lung capacity. That's what I've been dealing with. And when I can't breathe that night, I had to fight for a year for this. I was on nebulizer treatment. I've been in construction. I got concrete dust in my lungs. It's, irre it's irreplaceable, and this is what I came to. And it's a sad thing when I get better health care in Stillwater Prison than I do here. I didn't have this problem, none of this. I wasn't on all this diabetic medicine because they, it, it's all different, and it's got worse. It's almost like, you know, just send me back there because at least I won't die because of neglect. And that's what this is. This is neglect. I don't care what you say. I've dealt with it. I'm living with it every day. Every day, and I'm going blind on the side. Tell me how you'd feel if your doctor didn't address your blood pressure. So now you're going blind. Irreversible. I get a shot in my eyeball every month. That's going to make you happy? You're going to be nice about it? The people who are, the reason it's happening? I have every tie here, and if you read these, you'd go, this is bullshit. I keep these, you know, and they're trying, you're trying to put me on an IPP for giving a shit about my health? That's more, that's punishment for caring about myself. Can you explain what the IPP is anymore, I have no idea what an IPP is, even is. Well, they want to limit your ability to grieve, potentially? No, so I, I don't what think it's it? the ability to grieve. I think it's to, it's the repetitive medical requests that come in day after day, like several days in a row where we have up to 10 days to answer a medical request, but in the meantime, the same topic may have multiple. So then the IPP would limit his his ability to write requests that would, would, it would restrict it? I would say consolidate it. Like, you let us answer the one that you have before you send the next one the next day on the reflective same Reflective of, like, following the chain of communication, wait right. for the response before you write another follow-up request? And then there's punishment if he refuses to follow that. You no, know it would be nice is if I wrote a request and you took care of it. That's what the real, that's how it should be. I shouldn't have to write other, I shouldn't be told, take ibuprofen. Okay, I write back, I'm not supposed to take ibuprofen. Then take Voltram, I write back, I'm not supposed to, I, I, I shouldn't have to, I've tried Voltram from some other buddy. Well, we looked at your canteen purchase, you haven't purchased it. Canteen doesn't sell Voltram. Yeah, it's gonna be repetitive because they're not taking care of it. Just treat me, give me something that takes the pain away so my blood pressure isn't through the roof. Don't lie to my cardiologist and not tell him the full story. Because I have an appointment to come to my cardiologist, I guarantee you he would not have increased my blood pressure medicine if he knew I was in pain. No cardiologist would, and I guarantee you that. And I've asked other nurses down there where they took my blood pressure yesterday, and they agreed with me. They would have never done that. So 
I was, they misrepresented me to that cardiologist, and I, I bet money on it, and I'm not even a gambler. Okay. So, Mark, ultimately, I want to know what you want, because what I hear is that... I, I want the, no, no pain. Okay, I can't guarantee you're going to have no pain. I mean, what's Ultram? Every, one it's, guy in our unit it's writes... Narcotic. Is it? I never heard it before. Yep. But if it takes my pain away and I can sleep, I want it. So narcotics are not indicated for degenerative joint disease. So that, that's not going to be an option. I'm 99.9% .9 Well, then what is? What, it, what will work? I don't care what it is. I don't... Well, care and gel. That does so, not work. But have that, you given it an opportunity to? Other uh, than yeah. Other kind of roommates or another peers once, once in a while, have you done it several days in a row? Several days in a row, it doesn't work at all. Not one bit. This is so bad a pain. I've never, I've never felt any, I've been shot before and this. I'd rather be shot than have this damn pain in my neck. Right here. Right here all the time. And it sends lightning bolts down my arm. I've never felt anything like it in my life. Never. And, and my, and I don't, I don't care if you give me some tea that I can drink that takes a pain away. I don't care what it is, but at least treat it. I shouldn't have to write multiple kites and get, and end up chasing my tail. And that's what you're doing. Are you done doing, I'm just reading notes here, done doing a thousand what, or a thousand push-ups a day? Well, of course I can't do that. I can't do nothing. And you know what happens when I can't work out because of my ankle and shoulder? My A1C goes up. Because that's because health service is not taking care of their business. Okay, what are you doing dietary-wise for your blood pressure? Barely eating anything. How about Slim Jims and that that are on campus? I don't eat Slim Jims. I never buy that crap. Mark is one of the most conscious eaters. He is very good with his eating. In, in terms of his diabetes, he watches his blood, his blood levels and all that, his uh, sugar levels and such. He's very strict about his eating habits. He's really good. And this yeah. is why, because I, from talking to Mark, he knows that he has to because he doesn't get the proper care from medical. So the best he can do is watch his, what goes in his system. So prior to shoulder pain, your diabetes was on November 30th, your A1C was 7.9, but not controlled. Well, here it says, A1C came down to 7.9, 7 result was normal. This is what you guys gave me, normal. It's not normal, it's still elevated. Well, sure it is, but this is what I get, saying it's normal. You, I, this brings up a question. Can you tell me, Nikki or anybody, what is the process when you get a blood test or you go to Essentia or you deal with Essentia on some level and they make their reports and their findings, it gets sent up here and what happens? I want to know the, the, the yep. process. So then the nurse practitioner reviews it and if there is any questions or concerns, we have a what's called a care link so we can direct message the provider through the computer to say like she did with the blood pressure from the retina center. Here's the blood pressure. He's scheduled to see you coming up. Do you want to adjust meds now or do you want to wait till his appointment? Do we get those original papers from Essentia? They go into, it, it, it'll depend, and I say that hesitantly because if you went for a hospitalization, you get what's called an after-visit summary, an ABS, if you're in call. That we will review, make sure there's no dates of upcoming appointments, and we can get that back. If you went to just your appointment for the day and come back on our form, we do not, that does not go up to the point. So I, I had a blood test done in the office over here in the, in the facility by somebody that works at Essentia, and I got a memo from MSOP that said it was normal. Correct. Right. So I did not get the documents from Essentia. Correct. Right. Why is that? Because Essentia is the, is the who does our lab. You can ask him for a copy of it. So I'm... I'm but we're here to talk for Mark. Well, I'm just a point. I'm making okay. for Mark. Well, I have their answer because I have yeah. the Essentia and I have yours on my shoulder. And Essentia is a well-rounded form ossification, chronic finding. However, there's association with soft tissue swelling, uh, clinical correlation could be made to be whether this a tiny acute fracture. Now I have kites saying I didn't have no fracture. So that says here, Essentia. Does it say fracture on yours? Nope. Well, why would you leave that out? So what date is yours? 
Which one? Uh, 1320. Which, which district? That is 228 22. 122822. This is for my ankle. From Essentia. And it says uh, chronic finding. That doesn't sound good. So that means you've always had some sort of classification there. So but you would get the good. results from Mark. Well, I don't, I, nothing came on you in fracture. He had to dig for that document. You didn't give him that. You hid the results. How is that okay? I want to know what is there a policy? Is there something we're not understanding? I don't like my stuff being sugar coated. It was a fracture when he handed me that my ankle brace I've been wearing now for 90 days, serving no purpose whatsoever because it's trying to straighten out a crooked ankle, hurts every day. He goes, "Your that had my X-ray that Friday." He goes, "Here, your ankle's fractured. See ya." Your doctor do that to you? Heck, no, he wouldn't do that to you. That's what they did to me. And when I went back the next day, said I didn't know how to put it on, they had to Google it to find out how to put this cast on me right. The nurse who put it on me. Because she, even she didn't know how to put it on. Right? Yeah, well, I don't know what it is. It's crap because I use it. It hurts more because it's trying to straighten out a stick that's been healed crooked. And that's because it didn't, I didn't come here with this. Can I see that? What? That. Yeah. I'm just curious. Because there is still some surrounding soft tissue swelling, which could represent an ankle sprain. I called the Essentia on call for diatrist and reviewed your x ray findings with her. She reports this is something to let it be. So it, it's not, we didn't stop and just not do anything. You see any of that there? No, because this is the one from, where's the other one that you're looking at? This. Uh, the fall 2922 from Tanya reading. Mm -hmm. That's a shoulder. Okay, so those are two different. Two different, yeah. So, yeah, that's a shoulder. Are you listening, Marshall? And if you say that that part of this is coming from the podiatrist at Essentia, right? Providing that direction to Claudia. Yeah. yeah. Right, but it wasn't on my report. It didn't say nothing about fracture. Well, it says it could represent an ankle sprain, and an avulsion is a twist. A twist. So that's where they call it. But the thing is. It's I didn't do anything to hurt my ankle. It's like when I was asked by Tanya, I said, no, I was walking. So is there something wrong with my bones that they're just falling apart? Am I, they're just dissolving? That's a question. How old are you? Old as hell. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been in construction my whole life. But so like the, the hard years. But yeah, but it, it would, so if I was, but a doctor would have went further on. And not just threw me a cast through the window and said, hey, have a good day. Right, but Tanya did go further on. She called. She looked at my, no, you're wrong. I contacted the Essentia on-call podiatrist, Dr. Sybil Nagel, sorry, I can't pronounce it, and reviewed your x-ray findings with her. She reports this is something to let it be. I had nursing issue and an air cast to wear went up to help with symptoms until you can get the new orthotic. I encourage elevation and ice to area as well. It's, I guarantee you when I go in and go to the uh, orth orthopedic guy or whoever, they're going to find more because I can't even wear your brace. It hurts. And when I went for my annual with her, she looked at my ankle because she said she's a foot specialist. Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. I said, do you have an x-ray built in your hand? I had to write a thousand kites to get an x-ray done. It's not like you guys did it. It's me. This is why you get a thousand kites, because that's what it takes for you guys to act. Even in, you know, I appreciate you reading that from Essentia, okay? But this speaks to the problem. Why, why do we have to go through all this to get that kind of information? He got, that was what was on his memo that he got back. Well, the, so I'm, I guess I'm talking more about this Essentia document. I mean, we have to dig to get this, and it's difficult to get it. And... Look at all these requests in front of us. I mean, guys on the phone can't see it, but I'm looking at 100 requests to get two or three things that on the street would be a simple fix. Can I ask a clarifying question because I don't know? Uh -huh. And it kind of will stand to what your, your point is. So that sheet that he's reading with the information from Essentia was something that, Mark, you had to write a request to him to get? Is that what you're saying? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so 
when, and this is my thought process of like if, if I were a client and whatnot, and I go on, a, on an appointment, I don't get information when I come right back in, right? So then I would say, okay, I know I had an appointment, I'm going to write to him, ask for a copy of my documentation, and then maybe none of, would that staff then not be necessary? If you have it, because it took you all of that to get that paper, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, so all of those could have been replaced potentially with one to him saying, "Can I get my documentation for my doctor visit on X Y Z?" No, it, it it took all that to get an X ray. Oh, okay, just kidding. Not I, the paper, just the X ray. Talking about because to the information because back. they, I have kites here. You can look through them all. I got kites here and saying, eh, "We don't think an X ray is necessary." We don't think so. We've had people look days. at it. Sixty days, days of this. It's and not necessary. I got I got this is from eleven twenty eight about my ankle. So your concern is that the amount of time that it takes to have your medical needs addressed. Right. I, a fair summary. Yeah, that's one of the problems. Well, okay. I think if we break it down like one problem at a time, because there's multiple problems that you're experiencing. So how do we kind of organize it so it's not just I have a, my concern is my health. My concern is you're leaving my blood pressure run high, you're neglecting the pain, and you went to a cardiologist and didn't tell him that I was in pain. That's my concern. And you need to handle that because my eyes are getting worse. They have to try to change medication. The retinal surgeon said it's getting worse. And I told him, is there, my blood pressure is the roof. What are they doing? Absolutely nothing. But is that true? Absolutely totally. Nothing. You didn't do a dang thing. You're seeing cardiology. You're seeing I cardi saw the cardiology in December. My blood pressure was great after that. This was because of the pain. You've had, I just went back to 2020. You've had high blood pressure since 2020. Since, since I came here, and they took my, you carry your back, took all my medications away. I didn't do that. I was never on 200 milligrams of metapropyl. I came here in a clonidine patch and 20 milligrams of lisinopril. For blood pressure. Yeah. yeah. You know what she did? Upped it to 40, put me on something else, and 200 milligrams of metapropyl. The cardiologist didn't do that. I went to the cardiologist. He upped it. He went from 25 to 50. She went from 50 to 200. And when I went back to the cardiologist, and they left me on that for a year, and I, have a, and I ran out of it on a Friday, and I have a kite here. Oh, let's go to that one. I have a kite here at 2... Uh, 2.13.22, hey, we're sorry you ran out of your metapropyl, 200 milligrams. We'll have it in a few days. Right here. So they ran out of it. You know how important metapropyl, 200 milligrams, to stop cold turkey on it? Well, sure you do, because it says do not stop cold turkey on it. I had chest pains. I let them know. I didn't get it for three days. I couldn't even get out of the bed. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. Now you see why I'm upset? I gave, put all my stuff in, it just didn't come. Did they run the thrifty white and grab it? Nah, it'll be okay for four days. What, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I got it. And she apologized. Please advocate for yourself if this occurs again, so we can have it delivered. Why didn't they have it delivered then? Is it so, again, Mark, I'm just filling in here. Right, but this is. Through. Are you Sam's medication? That's yes. the first question. I'm saying so you turned it in everything. I got all my other medications except okay. for them. And that could have killed me. Could have put me in cardiac arrest. So you still dropped in your request seven days prior? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got all my other meds. Yep. I didn't have to redo it. They knew it. They was like, oh, it didn't come with the order. It's not like I can run there and get it done. Which med was it again? Sorry. Metapropyl. 200 milligrams. 100, 100 milligram tablets. Would have been 213.22. Uh, uh, something, Borgland, Bergland. So yeah. See, this is Monica. I'm still on board here, and I just wanted to make a comment that, that that's, that's an awful large dose of metoprolol to be put on just at the drop of a dime and then to have no follow-up done. 
from what I'm understanding, that's that's definitely a safety issue. The nursing staff should have been asking questions. So it looks like okay. you've done 50 milligrams twice a day back in 2020 was your initial dosing, right? Right. So we jumped to 200. That's yeah. They really jumped me to they jumped me to 200. <clears throat> the cardiologist did, and a nurse practitioner did. Right. I had a question that from here to China. I'm an RN. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I honestly don't see the metapropylol actually on his record, so that's why I'm stumbling a little bit. I see Corey. That's, a that's the new medication because the cardiologist took me off the metapropylol. He goes, that you shouldn't be on that dose. You guys left me on that for a year. I have a year. I have so, okay, complete kites of this. I'm really confused right now. You. In December of last year, I went to the cardiologist. Yep. He took me off the 200 milligrams. Okay, so what med were you, did you run out of on 222222. 22, 22. 22. Okay, that, yeah. that's my issue. That's yeah, my issue. yeah. Um, what? Did a nurse put you on that dosage? Nurse practitioner. Cardiologist couldn't believe it. And I, I, I Monica, I don't believe that it would. Would a would a cardiologist want 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 to increase my uh, blood pressure medicine if he knew I was on pain and pain was causing it to be raised? Typically, they would hold off and make those adjustments after the pain has been addressed appropriately. All right, thank you. But if the pain is chronic degenerative joint disease versus an acute trauma. Well, if it's chronic degenerative joint disease, it happened in one day. But when that doesn't mean that it couldn't all of a sudden escalate. You know, sometimes those chronic things all of a sudden just really be a thorn. And that doesn't mean that that can't happen quickly. You said you, you slip and fall or something? Yeah. Or you... I, I told him right away. I slipped and fell. I caught myself and something pulled. I, I, I don't think it has anything to do with my old bones. I think I tore something. But would I know? I don't have an ultrasound built in. Will they give me a I begged for an ultrasound. Please look at it so I know. It'd be an MRI. Oh, anything. Oh, they. I got that kite saying at this time we don't think you should. You get an MRI. I have that one too. This is why I write. I'm not doing it to pester them. I'm just doing. It. I want to live. I shouldn't have to go through all this just to live. You guys don't. You go to your clinic and get taken care of. I have to battle to get anything done, and I shouldn't have to do that. And as far as diet goes, I don't eat anything because the diet here is terrible. Even the diabetic to give you white bread and rice every day. Tell me what part of diabetic friendly that is. And vegetables that are so overcooked, there's no nutrition left in them. I have to self-purchase my vitamins. I get $121 a month. I'm supposed to self-purchase all my pain medication and my vitamins and clothes and hygiene and everything else. Man, is this picture wrong or is it just me that it's wrong to? And I, I, I got one here that says, I got a kite back from Mandy saying, oh, they're not going to, your county won't approve shoes for your diabetic. I'm getting shoes. I'm getting shoes because I'm diabetic. You're getting shoes because of your ankle and your orthotic. So that, you, diabetics don't just get shoes because they have a diagnosis of diabetes. That's they not what your shoe guy said. They have to have something else going on. With well, your shoe guy said differently. He goes, you're diabetic? I go, yep, you qualify for shoes. So. It, I don't know. I went by who they gave me the shoes. Yeah, MA has guidelines, and, those, and I can print those out for you if you'd like them very specifically that says what diabetes in and of itself will not get you shoes. And we're going into the weeds on something that's really right. not affecting you. No, it's, I don't. You have to have something else. But I've been managing my diabetes so and my blood pressure and everything else. But from neglecting my ankle, neglecting my shoulder, I can't work out, I can't walk, and now now I have to starve myself to keep my numbers down. I don't want to be on insulin, and I never. My numbers were great, but now you took all that away. But right? all you would have to do with my first kite, you say I write multiple kites. How about the very first one that says my ankles hurt? I think I broke it, and I get I, it gets looked at. Then it gets dealt with. I shouldn't have to wait 70 days till now. Now it's starting to heal, or my shoulder. Sure.
Right. So he's got, he's yeah. got them coming, correct? I guess. But I just read something that says that they've been fitted for it. Right. But that's not going to help my ankle. So it's not. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot. Of, I, well, I know from talking to Mark, it's like this, of course, but there's so much to go too far in the weeds before we come to some solutions. But what? Should we talk about solutions so that we don't leave here with, without a victory of some kind? Can we give Mark some hope and I just, I give just, him a plan of some kind? There has to be something out there in the world of medication that'll take away this pain. This is this is 2023, and you're telling me there's nothing out there that'll help. I do not believe it has anything to do with degenerative anything. I believe I tore something in there, and you guys haven't looked at it yet. And I believe something's tore. So an MRI? Would, would be a step, it, right? Yeah, and I and I I would bet that you're gonna find go, oh wow, it's ripped. So can I make a proposal that, that he gets an MRI so and those results give it be given to him directly? Yep. So yes and no. Um, I cannot order an MRI. That is a practitioner that has to order that. So I can review it with Tanya to see what she says. I also know you have follow up with I don't know if it's follow up or a new appointment with orthopedic coming out shortly. Okay. Um, so that they would also direct what that case would look like. So I can't say that, yes, I can say an MRI, um, and then there's already the policy for how to get his results directly from, he can, he can request them directly from his center. He doesn't have to is, request is them. Is there something him. I can get for pain so I can sleep, I can get a good night's sleep, and, and I, I don't, it's horrible. You know, I don't care, I don't care if it's, I don't care what it is, as long as it works. Yeah. And it can't My raise the blood pressure. I have a question. This is Monica. And, you know, when you say soon, how soon is soon? Because your soon and our soon might be very different. Within a month. And that's all I can give you. Monica, I waited eight months to see a cardiologist. Soon is not, doesn't happen here. But she did say one month. And, you know, we can't give you specific dates. Oh, I know. I know. So that gives you a little bit of a less of a time frame than eight months. So but I, I have a card here that says it'd be soon two months ago. Okay. We'll be clarified. So I'm just letting you know. Within one month. I have, I have four kites that start back in um, March of last year. It says your cardiologist appointment soon. I didn't go till December. So well, because your September one you knew about, so that had to be. No, I didn't know about it. I was in I was in HSA. I just read someplace that said you knew your September. One, no, Tanya there. Epler sent me something to see her on Monday back in HSA, and. And it came to me Friday, uh, Thursday night, and my appointment was the next day. Exactly. So they canceled it. And I couldn't use the phones back there or anything else. So I don't understand what the big deal was. But she acted like it was like a, a breach of Fort Knox security. I mean, I can't get no mail back in HSA. I can't use no phones. But I, and I can't go to see. They didn't even take me to the dentist. I have a kite from the dentist that says, we don't look at people from HSA. You don't get, I think it says, you don't get medical services while you're in HSA. Yeah, so I don't understand none of that. You're, I have a kite that says that. You're back there for These 59 are, days, and yeah. you don't get medical services. I don't services. get medical services, and no, I'm writing was, to... Okay, was that, I just have to clarify, was that from dental, or was that from... Dental? It was, what, four appointments got canceled. Four appointments got canceled. Cardiologist, retinal. And dentist, dentist. And some other one. Yeah. And Because he's in HSA. Yeah. No other reason. Yep, that was you it. Don't, you don't deserve health care if you're a bad boy. Well, this was also, you weren't on PI status or AR, you were refusing to leave. Which is no, at matter. this time I was on AR matter. status. It doesn't even I was matter. on AR status and, and the whole time. Honestly, look, I was on AR status and okay, was released from HSA. I'm sorry, but I'm offended that you just did that, Courtney. It doesn't matter why someone's back there. This is a human being, and he deserves medical attention as much as you do. I don't care why he's in HSA. Bottom line. We're, we're getting into the weeds a little bit, so I just want to kind of bring this back. To but that's a very good point, Dan. Your concerns are. Yes. 
the amount of time taken to answer medical, I just want to make sure I have these down correctly, neglecting the pain, address your blood pressure, and there was a fourth one, and I didn't catch it because we got down to something else. The shoulders. Well, I had pain. Just, so. just take care of this. So I don't, because by taking care of this, it takes care of any damage to my heart valve from you guys neglecting my blood pressure and doesn't make my eye worse, which is irreversible from initially neglecting my blood pressure. So it's a chain reaction of help. The ankle is already screwed up, so my walking is limited. You know, most likely in order to fix it, it's going to have to be rebroke because or orthopedic shoes aren't going to correct a crooked ankle. It's crooked. So in that, it, I didn't come here with a crooked ankle. I used to walk all the time, all the, every morning, all the yeah, time, yeah. and I can't. You guys all know it. So yeah. you can roll the cameras back. So for an orthopedic, and again, I'm just asking because I don't know. For an orthopedic appointment, would that be the the, the appropriate time for Mark to address the shoulder and the ankle? They sent me the a ankle? kite saying that they're okay. making it one appointment. They took oh. away, Could and I this say? is why I send kites and save them. Because it's both. both okay, so he doesn't have to go to a separate wait for a separate appointment for the ankle versus the shoulder. Correct. Okay. But right now is is mainly it's this pain that I can't take nothing, so I'm in it all the time. I can't. There's no Voltran magic rub, MSOP water won't lower my blood pressure. Like I said, go. I was told the other week when my blood pressure was high, go drink some water. And relax. Really, my blood pressure was 189 over 109. That was the second test after sitting there. The first one was 168 over like 93. And this is not, there's nothing here magical that's going to help my blood pressure. You must have something that'll take the pain away. I mean, I see people, they get, cut, they get bit by a spider and they're taking something. They're taking an oxy. And I have a damn, I, I, yeah, the guy got bit by a brown recluse and he's taking an oxy. I mean, come on. What the hell are you doing? I'm going to challenge you a little bit on that because do you, do you truly believe that? Because I don't. Because I, I, the number of clients... He had some stuff on here, his hands. He said he got bit by minimal. a spider. Huh? I said the number of clients here who are on narcotics are pretty minimal, and I would have heard if somebody got bit by a spider. Well, you're talking about the surgery. Cause I don't know who it is. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter. So I, but you know, because he, I'm, I, the damage is being done to my heart valve and my eye, and it's... It's it's all paper. It's all in paper. It's happening. When the eye, when the retinal, and the eye doctor saw me when I first came here, I had no issues with my eye. A year later, I got hemorrhaging in my eye. The right eye has nothing to do with diabetic. Left eye is diabetic. So I'm managing my diabetic, but I can't manage my blood pressure because you guys would wouldn't carry Orvac just threw medicine on the wall to see if they stick.
Josh, Joshua, the lady that you're, the, the nurse that's here, she's in charge of the medical at MSLP and St. Peter. Knowing that her own license is at risk. No, 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 I think we're going to keep the recording, so you cannot share any of mine. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Monica. You're welcome. They're shutting it down. Shutting it down.